My name is David Bowers. I'm the template uh, specialist here at Vexis Auctions up on the uh, Tees side in the UK. Uh, I'd just like to um, show you uh, a flavour of some of the items that we've got coming up in the forthcoming uh, November the 24th tin plate and plastic sale that's 2021 um, as I walk around I'll point out some of the uh, more interesting items uh, this is part one uh, and when we've eventually completed the, the catalogue in the sale we'll do a part two uh, video as well okay so I'll want to set off now around the uh, around the tables and just point out a few things as we go along uh, we call our sales the tin plate sales but in actual fact um, we do tin plate, plastic, uh, wood, metal, um, cast iron, uh, all manner of materials uh, because there's such a large variety of toys in this sale. Uh, as we go around now, uh, you can see some of the novelty items here on my left. Uh, I'll carry on up here a bit further. Uh, the robot there, uh, a few more space toys. Um, there's quite a large section of space toys further on, I'll, show, I'll point those out as we come around. Uh, vehicles, motorcycles, uh, they're always popular. The tin plate motorcycles, some of them are boxed, of course. Very good. That's it. And then uh, coming down here again. Um, some more tin plate cars, uh, a nice Volkswagen Beetle there, and a shoe call car, always very popular. Uh, Volkswagen Beetles and the like. A couple of Dodgeum cars, battery operated ones from uh, um, people who are into fairground items. Some nice Japanese tin plate uh, vehicles here. Um, we've got here a bulldozer and um, a forklift truck, they're from the 1960s and I have to say they've survived very well and they also have the boxes. A couple of large Triang trucks here, they've become very popular in recent years. The circus one in particular is, uh, is quite unusual to find uh, complete and with its trailer. This is the second of three benches we've got going at the moment, there's that much stuff. Uh, we've got some aircraft models. These are made by um, a very well respected company called Schuko uh, in Germany and uh, they were called for some reason the Radiant 5600. Uh, battery operated, um, got sound effects, uh, propellers turn and all that. We don't test them of course but they're very nice for display and that one has the remains of its box as well so that's quite interesting okay on this side we've got um, one of several Mammod live steam toys um, here we've got the Roadster uh, we've got the uh, wagon here uh, again with its box trailer uh, steam traction engine and these although the toys with adult supervision uh, they are often used by adults anyway uh, they're like small kettles and they can have water added to them and a mess or um, uh, a special burner underneath heats up the water and once steam is raised it turns the cylinder which drives the flywheel and that propels the vehicle along and all of them will work like that. Um, this is of interest, <coughs> a tin plate bus, it's a British style bus uh, but it's made by a company called Ideal and that's actually made in India. So that's quite an interesting piece. You can see the half cab of the old uh, 40s and 50s style buses. Um, that's an Indi of Indian manufacture. That should do well. Uh, a Japanese uh, car there, a box. Um, a German uh, tin plate um, military uh, searchlight truck. Uh, and then just as a contrast, we've got a couple of the battery operated puppies there. Um, these are interesting, we've got some Hong Kong plastic vehicles here, um, this is interesting, this car is um, an Austin Princess, uh, quite a rare car from the late 50s, and here we have uh, an Austin 1800, 
uh, their nickname to the um, classic car enthusiasts was uh, a land grab um, and it's interesting that back in the day in the 60s when those were popular people would uh, lots of people would buy the Rolls Royce and the Bentley and the exotic cars but what uh, what beco what's become rare these days is the family cars. Kids of uh, years ago remember the uh, family having and they aspire to find the models of the family cars that people have rather than the exotic models uh, like the, um, the Jaguar here. We've also got here, this, is, this has created quite a lot of interest since it's been here. Uh, and again, it's a bit of a mixture. This is British made, I believe by a company called Wells Brimtoy uh, in Britain in the 1960s. And um, it's a tin plate novelty toy that works quite well. It's also got a sporting theme. As you can see, it's a tin plate boxing ring. There's a clockwork motor inside there. Two uh, opponents inside, uh, both with hinged arms. And if I, if I wind that up, such put the brake on you'll see a bit of a punch up develop uh, and that works quite well and besides uh, having a, a punch up in the cataloging room um, it's interesting to note that it's box it's illustrated box has still survived okay Okay, carrying on. Um, uh, quite a large scale tractor there from the 1950s, very quite rare. A very nice, um, a Japanese made electric mobile Cadillac car. That's quite a large scale car. Um, as you can see, steerable wheels underneath the front seats. We've got a nice clean battery compartment. And these large scale tin plate cars from the uh, 50s and 60s era are very popular, and uh, especially in the day. And this one's also got its box as well. So we'd expect that to do in the region of 300 pounds plus. Um, we'll see on the day. Okay, carrying on. So, okay. Here we've got, um, for the mechanically minded, um, a group of cranes. Uh, some of these uh, have, have, have been boxed up for restoration. Some people like to uh, repair these items. These are in working order. Uh, I'll test one for you if you like. What I'm going to do is uh, wind it up. You okay with that? Yep. And if I can remember which controls which. That one turns it around. That one lowers the bucket. That one raises it again. And so on. And it's all done by clockwork, no batteries. So uh, no tears on Christmas morning when the batteries have uh, been out. Okay, carrying on. Uh, these are quite rare. We've got three uh, pre and post war tin plate vehicles. Uh, done by a, a well respected company, British company called Wells. There's a police van, the Black Mariah, quite good condition, clockwork, in working order, uh, and that's where the bad guys get taken away in. I've uh, got a Royal Mail van um, with GR, so that dates it uh, to um, the, the wartime era or, or just before. And then we've got uh, the old ambulance played with but a nice uh, character toy and they should do a hundred pounds plus each and then we've got uh, a few racing cars um, in particular the uh, bluebird uh, racing car this is uh, these are always very sought after um, you can get an idea of the length from from this uh, Gunterman uh, the German one uh, it's lacking his uh, driver figure. Uh, oh no, he isn't. It's a beggar point. We found it since. The driver figure uh, is separate, but he could be placed in there, and it is in working order. Uh, 
that could do five, six hundred pounds plus, uh, even though it needs a little bit of attention. Um, a well respected British uh, toy, Metoy, from after the war, a large racing car, that's also in working order. Uh, that should do two or three hundred pounds, I think. Another vehicle here um, of interest, uh, this is German, made by a company called Tip & Co. You notice the TC registration number there, has all its um, five fireman figures, is in working order, and there's probably uh, two to three hundred pounds there uh, onwards. Carry on. A few box uh, trucks here. Um, these are in very nice condition, Japanese and German. Uh, can see the quality of the made. that's an American Chevrolet. Uh, here we have a French uh, pre-war example that survived very well, still has its box, made by a company called VB. Uh, over here a very large uh, Japanese made uh, Jeep, a military Jeep. Uh, these vehicles these models were £2,500 when they were new. This one still has its box. You can see underneath here uh, that they've got a petrol engine. Um, we've even got a water-cooled radiator uh, there. And um, the item is uh, remote controlled. Uh, we don't test them, of course, but um, uh, that's a nice uh, large-scale model for someone who's into military vehicles. Uh, more man up there, a very nice Meccano constructor car. This is a number two series, the smaller series, pre-war. Um, the odd replacement parts, uh, replacement wheel there, but overall a very nice uh, condition car. Uh, made by the same company, Meccano, who also made uh, dinky toys and so on. That should do about £200 plus. Okay, I'm going to move up to the fire bench now. Okay, on the third bench now, uh, yet more tin plates and plastic toys. Um, of interest here at the side of me, I've got uh, a quantity, all from the same vendor, of Dan Durr related toys. Now, people say to me, uh, who's Dan Durr? And uh, he does go back a bit, even before my time, although there's been some reissues. Uh, but in, the, in 1950, the Eagle comic uh, first came out. Uh, you can see a reference to the Eagle comic on that, on that box there. The Eagle comic was one of the most respected and best-selling uh, British comics for children of all time. Uh, it was the idea of a Lancashire vicar, Marcus Morris, uh, and he, with a member of his congregation, Frank Hampton, who was also a very good illustrator, produced the Eagle comic and as a result, uh, the Reverend f felt that they needed a superhero for children to look up to. He didn't like the American comics that kids were reading just after the war. So Dan Durr, Space Pilot of the Future, uh, was the answer. And there is a picture of, um, uh, of Dan Durr in his, uh, one of his uh, outfits. And all these are toys that related to the uh, to the character from both the comic and also from a Radio Luxembourg um, series that ran every night at quarter past seven for five years apparently. That was before television uh, got going. The television was in its infancy then, but it was a radio series as well. Uh, so here we've got uh, a Danda cosmic drum. In very nice condition as you can see uh, still got its detailed back uh, back scene inside which explains all the parts okay uh, we've got a very nice uh, planet gun a bit of damage on this one but it's uh, it's quite good spring loaded and those missiles can be fired off no batteries required on that one we've got um, what looks like uh, a pistol uh, and it is a pistol but if you look at the title, it's also a space projector. And there's even a roll of uh, film there. Um, 
Surrey Lloyd film for showing films on it. So that's quite a nice one. The last one we had did about £300. Um, again, Space Guns, uh, a rare walkie talkie. I've not seen that uh, colour walkie talkie before. All with the damned uh, theme. Um, again, a space shooting game, as we call it. And this one here is just a water pistol. Uh, but they've given it the most more exotic title of Atomic Jet Gun and that does, that'll do a lot for the value. Uh, another item here, uh, this one could do well, this was produced for Marks and Spencer's, the Dan Der Ray gun apparently, and I'm told that it sold out very quickly uh, because um, uh, of the popularity uh, and as a result it's become very rare. Okay, so that's the Dan Der items. Then carrying on up here, uh, we've got a few more vehicles uh, and you can probably see, oh we've got here quite a lot of tin plate cars again uh, banned by the well respected uh, Bandai manufacturers in um, Japan uh, the Cadillac uh, four-door sedan there and then the Cadillac four-door open top car uh, Ford Fairlane station wagon and then the good old fashioned uh, British Rolls Royce, uh, some Jaguar and MG sports cars, uh, some more recent cars there, um, just for um, comparison, uh, a nice large scale wooden pond yacht there for anybody who's interested. Uh, we'd like to make some space, we'd like someone to buy an, an interesting one. Um, so let's see this one uh, by the well respected uh, Japanese firm of Horikawa. Um, it's battery operated, I won't get it running, uh, but you can see how uh, when it gets going, all the lights flash and it will allow this um, pilot figure to emerge out of his cockpit. That's a nice touch. Uh, another one here, um, this is by Noel Murer, it's called the Apollo Z for some reason. Uh, we tested it yesterday and it does work reasonably well, the lights light up and so on. But it's interesting that um, it, it comes in its box and you can see the box. Uh, this was actually produced for the Japanese market. Um, so it's interesting it's still got its box even though the box is a little bit worn. Um, various rockets here, um, a couple of other vehicles, the tank. And then we've also got here um, this Lem 200, which is um, a Spanish made, uh, what do you call it, um, solar system type toy. Um, it has a, a, a space vehicle there which seems to dock together. Uh, we think that could be the moon at close range with the distant uh, Earth globe at the top, controlled by this. It needs the tension but I still feel that uh, it captures the interest in the space race in the 1960s so we'll let the, the new buyer sort it out. Uh, here uh, one of our staff tried it on yesterday. Uh, this is American, it's called an SAC hat and quite simply a child would put this on their head uh, using this microphone, put batteries in, there's a control unit inside the box and speak through the um, through the megaphone. If people's voices are loud enough they don't need that sort of thing. Really. Okay, uh, and a few more of this space and uh, science fiction related items here as well. So, um, uh, oh there's also some things on this side as well, I'm going to take you down, down that side. As well. Okay, uh, last uh, section uh, so far, uh, again you can see more vehicles the ever popular Meccano set there, um, an interesting uh, Astro Ray space toy made by Chad Valley. Chad Valley, this actually fires missiles at a tin plate, um, tin plate target, and you can see, like so. And you discover points through whichever planet you hit. Uh, now the Knights used to fly by. Um, here we've got a couple of aircraft models, um, a Victory Industries boat, uh, a very nice robot. Here's Mr. Xerox. Um, 
Cornwall Constructor cars again. This is the number one type. These are uh, much bigger and more valuable still. Probably four or five hundred pounds. An empty box for one. If somebody has a nice model and they buy the empty box, that will make it more valuable. So we get good money for empty boxes these days. Um, and then down here, this might be of interest. We need all the help we can get to sell these. We've got here someone's collection of Charles sewing machines and there are 30 of them all together. I've put them into five lots of about half a dozen each. Um, and if uh, Rihanna wants to show you them, uh, some are British, some are French, some are German, um, but they are very nice in their own right. Some of them have got some very nice artwork on them, I'll show you uh, as such. Uh, these are the early ones. And then some of the later ones are a bit more simplistic um, and some of the later ones are battery operated where these are all mechanical. I'll show you another one there uh, as such. And by uh, winding the handle you can see that operates the sewing action uh, as they used to do back in the day. Uh, but yeah, those are quite nice and, uh, and, and quite reasonably priced as well. So that's as far as we are at the moment. Um, I'll leave you now in the hands of Leander and I uh, hope to see you again in uh, the part two video for this November 24th sale. Thank you.